Hello everyone and welcome to cramming an entire semester into a 10 minute video as a way to revise without having to study. So dynamics, uh, we have springs, we have dampers, we have resonance, we have earthquakes, we have single degrees of freedom, multiple degrees of freedom, but most importantly we have the motion equation which we will be deriving shortly. To start us off and derive the motion equation Let's take a look into the dynamics of a single degree of freedom system. Here is a house, also known as a one-story building. To simplify things, we can assume that all of its mass is concentrated in the ceiling, and the ceiling itself is infinitely stiff. The second assumption is not really necessary, but it makes calculating the bending stiffness just a bit easier. Then, this becomes equivalent to two cantilevers rotationally fixed on both sides, or a single one with double the stiffness, denoted by k. Let's also introduce damping by attaching the damper denoted by c here. But it can become simpler. Have a look at this animation. A bending beam is equivalent to a mass spring system, with the spring stiffness being equal to the bending stiffness of the beam. So, with some imagination, I hope you can see that these two are equivalent and our approximation is reasonable. Okay, time for some physics. We want to work in the deflection side of things, so we convert the spring force to deflection times stiffness and the damper force to damping coefficient times speed. Finally, inertia is mass times acceleration. From Newton's third law, the forces must be equal and we have now derived the motion equation. This is the starting point of dynamics. Inertia plus damping plus spring forces is equal to applied forces. What makes it different from statics is that we take time into consideration. More specifically, we look at the rates of change of deflection. This makes the motion equation a second order linear differential equation, which you may remember from high school math. If you're like me and didn't really pay attention to that, 3Blue1Brown has a great video on the subject which you can check out if you need a refresher. I'll link it in the description below. Okay, first off, we'll be making some assumptions, namely no other forces apart from F acting on our system, no second order effects, and the usual structural analysis assumptions, such as linearity. As for notation, M is mass, C is some viscous damping constant which causes a force that varies linearly with speed, K is the spring coefficient or something equivalent, which causes a force that varies linearly with position u. Don't forget that u is a function of time. Solving this equation will give us the displacement of the mass at any arbitrary time t. The dots above u denote derivatives with respect to time. That means that this f dot is exactly the same as this df dt. To solve this, we usually express it in terms of zeta and omega the damping factor and the natural frequency respectively. If we divide everything by the mass m and substitute these two, which I encourage you to try for yourself, and I'll give you a second to pause now, the equation is changed to the acceleration side of things. Now it's a bit easier to solve. The solution falls generally into two categories, forced vibrations and free vibrations. Let's look at free vibrations first. That means the external forces are zero. Trust me, this makes things so much easier. Keep in mind that the system can be moving without external forces since initial conditions can still exist. This could be something like holding the spring extended and releasing at time zero. Here's our original equation, which now simplifies to this second order linear homogeneous differential equation. I remove the t's just to make it easier to read. Now. A solution to this equation is u is equal to a e to the power of lt. Substituting that and solving for lambda gives these two solutions. Don't believe me? You are welcome to try it for yourself, but I'm just going to move on. This further splits into three categories, depending on the value of this, namely zeta less than 1, the underdamped case, zeta is equal to 1, critically damped, where the system reaches equilibrium the soonest, and zeta greater than 1, the overdamped case. The equations shown here can be used to find the position of the mass at any time t, 
after we substitute the initial conditions, of course. Don't forget to substitute your initial conditions. In the first case, if z is equal to 0, the exponential factor is equal to 1, and the system becomes a simple harmonic oscillator. Take a moment to appreciate why the functions produce these graphs by imagining a swivel door with a weak damper, a good damper, and a slow damper. That's it for derivations. Let's move on to everyone's favorite subject, resonance. Resonance occurs in the other category of dynamic systems, those with forced vibrations, specifically those with periodic loading. Examples of this can be unbalanced rotating machinery or turbulence. The equation of motion now becomes an inhomogeneous differential equation because the external force is not zero. Now u of t has both a particular solution, which is the solution to the enforced case, and the complementary function. The complementary function for this type of periodic loading looks like this. If you want to prove it for yourself, go ahead. But contrary to popular belief, this is not a math channel, so I'll not go into any more detail about it. Note that up tends to get closer to zero as time increases. This means that in the long term, we can approximate the solution only using uc. From this solution we can plot the graph of amplitude against frequency ratio. As the frequency of the force get closer and closer to the natural frequency of the system, the ratio of the dynamic amplitude over the static displacement gets bigger and bigger. That means that the closer you are to the natural frequency, the more resonance you will have. More formally, the steady state response, that is the long-term response, of a single degree of freedom system to harmonic excitation is a harmonic oscillation of the same frequency as the force but with a phase shift and an amplitude that depends heavily on the forcing frequency. This amplitude can be reduced by increasing damping or changing the stiffness or mass of the structure, both of which change its natural frequency. Why did we get into all of this trouble? Well, this fact is extremely important when designing earthquake resistant buildings, bridges, turbine power stations, and every other structure that may be affected by periodic loading. Some well-documented examples exist of cases where the dynamics were either not taken into consideration, such as the Tacoma Narrows Bridge, which suffered a catastrophic failure, cases where the dynamics were not fully considered, such as the Millennium Bridge, which was retrofitted with massive dampers following its unexpected sideways oscillation, but also cases where they were integrated into the design, such as the mass damper in the Taipei 101 tower. Well, that's all for now. I hope you learned something new, and I'll see you all next time. See ya!